Hello guys, my name is Alex and you are looking at one of the final renders for this Alias Auto Studio modeling tutorial. It will be split in three parts. First two is about modeling using Alias Auto Studio or Surface with A-class surfacing in mind and really, really tight tolerances. We will be striving for the maximum accuracy and best surface quality. And in the third one, we will bring our cut data, our model, into polygonal world for the future unwrapping and rendering. Quantitative for the beginners, but not for the first timers. You need to know the bare minimum how to operate with the viewport, how to place curves, what is degrees, basic continuity principles, and general core functions. It will be a long one, so buckle up and let's get started. All right, guys, so we are in Alice, but before we start, let's check our construction options first. So let me expand it for you. Here it is. So <clears throat> this is, I'm sorry, this is the actual uh, tolerances for my construction option. I uh, encourage you to follow along with this tutorial with the same construction options. They are really, really tight, but you know, it just bring uh, more challenge and at the same time, you will get a much more accurate surface in the end. Uh, and I would like to draw your attention to uh, this block under the rational flags. So as you can see, there is a two uh, checkboxes, both of them checked. So the primitives and the curves, both of them are really necessary. And uh, if you don't know what the rational flags are, let me really quickly demonstrate before we start. So I'll toggle my perspective to orthographic um, and bring my circle. So my circles are not periodic, which means uh, that they are uh, crafted with uh, separate curves. The curves are, have, a, have a minimal amount of degrees, but if I will check the radius, they're perfect, right? So if I will uncheck the rational flags and create the same circle and check it again. Oh, sorry, I, I said uncheck. <clears throat> sorry, and uh, check it again. Yeah, you can see it's wobbling around. And it's wobbling really significantly. Uh, really significantly. Um, it's it's out of the uh, our tolerance corridor, if you will. So this one will not do with the tolerances we have. Of course, we can bring more degrees and more degrees and eventually kind of fit into the tightness of the tolerances we have, but then we have really heavy curves. And our job is to create it, the most lightweight with the minimum amount of degrees and with the minimum amount of uh, surfaces in general. So don't forget to check it on. Um, and it's actually a good rule of thumb to always have them checked because you never know. And at least you're not bothering about that. So it actually can have some, these work with uh, the rational flux have its own oddities. And I think we will uh, find them later in the process and I will show you how to tackle them. So. Don't worry about that. And uh, yeah, so let's get started and let's modeling. Let me minimize it. I will zoom in. So let me toggle the perspective again into the orthographic because a lot of our tools we will use works the best in orthographic mode. Or basically, this is the only option for them to work properly. Just keep it in mind. All right, so we will start with the box or base, better say cube right, called cube, just snap on it. I will not scale it, I will, do, will not do anything, but I will try to be as parametric as I can, so it will be easier for you to follow, okay? So this is the default cube, and as a result, it have a default dimensions, 100 by 100 by 100 millimeters. Uh, so, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, what you're gonna do is we'll click on this uh, tool, uh, with this icon, it's called patch precision tool, click and drag. And it creates, an, uh, they call it isopams on the surface. But the surface is flat, and the only thing we really needed to is to define the center, where is the center is. It's right there. Cool. Now we take our trusty circle and just snap it using out. Here we go. It's because it's just, just exactly on the grid. Great stuff. Now, let's rotate it because it's in the wrong orientation. And um, another thing to note, I am using my custom menu, which you already, I guess, understand, and my custom marking menus and the custom palettes. 
and custom hotkeys. Okay, of course, every single designer have its own uh, palette and their own hotkeys and etc. So this is more of a personal preferences. And specifically, I am using Gizmo. So I think it's really um, convenient uh, and uh, usability friendly to work with the Gizmo. Um, there is a lot of people who are disagree with me. It, well, it's personal preference, but uh, you will see that it's actually extremely handy to reflect and rotate things around. And if you really want to try the same uh, um, the same process and, and just using Gizmo as well, then the Gizmo is in the Transform tab here, and you need to hook it up uh, to your hotkeys. So it basically should be on the hotkeys, okay? So I digress, so let's proceed. Uh, let's uh, rotate that. Uh, I hit tab, there is the prompt uh, where we type all the necessary numbers and dimensions. So let's hit 90. Relative, there is a rel. Let's hit enter. Here we go. So we have the circle. Let's pick it up, open the information window. If you don't know where it is, it's in the Windows information, information window. And by the way, if you don't have an object blister, which we'll use a lot, it's in the uh, window object blister. So don't forget, forget this one. Um, all right, so pick on it one, this one, and change the scale. So as you can see, this is the relative scale, but as this is a default cube and a default circle with the default dimensions, they set to 100. So 100 means 100 millimeters. Let's scale it to uh, 80, here and here. All right. Oh, to me, it is. Well, it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> okay, so we have it. Um, now I can delete the cube, which I will do. I will pick this one and reflect it. For reflection, I will be using uh, my, uh, so this tool, sorry, which I split it on three parts. It's called the mirror options. So uh, there is three of them because there is three mirror axes, X, Y, Y, Z, and X, Z. So I have every single one with a different parameter. Um, I found it really uh, useful. So I click on X, Z, along X, Z. Right now we have a copy on the other side. Let's duplicate it and uh, rotate it uh, 90 degrees. Let's do that and uh, copy that again. Duplicate it. Oops, sorry. Let's pick them again. Like this. Misclick. Hit tab and rotate that again. Okay, cool. So basically, we defined the basic curve network, if you will. Very basic one. But we actually need it. So I will, I will be needing this later. So for now, I will just create the new layer and just assign it there, all right? Okay, so now I'll create another layer, which will be my working layer, and I will pick, uh, so for the picking, right? Uh, for the picking, there is an object, pick object options, right? But there is a few options with it. So you can pick the whole objects. So it doesn't matter what it is, a curve, um, um, kind of like a construction of a plane or whatever, um, a surface, it picks everything. Uh, another kind of uh, sub-option for that right here, I call it surface, it's my own title, but this is the same object. Where you can pick, you see there is a, like small icons. So I can pick the object, the object, I can pick the surface or I can pick the curve, right? Um, so it's really handy because right now I have the curves, I will pick my pick object tool with a curved uh, selection selected. So just select that and it automatically select. And if there will be any surfaces, the surfaces will not be selected. Extremely useful. So now what I'm gonna do, as I mentioned before, my circles are non-periodic. So basically there is a separate curves here, which is extremely handy in this situation because I can pick just the curves. Once again, one, two, three duplicate that and align it into my new layer. So now I can hide the original one with the main circles and left only with these ones. Really handy stuff. Now, so this one, as you may, I guess, imagine that it will be the one block and then we, when we'll finish it, we will just copy it across, uh, around and uh, we'll get the final form. So, but first we need to surface it. Right now, you can imagine if I'll just draw a couple of lines using the uh, the one degree curve tool. Just create it here 
and you can calculate the amount of uh, sides one two three four five six sides the um, patch or the surface we'll be creating should be four sided um, it's actually the only option for us even if they appear like with a converging point or you trimmed it and it looks not like a four sided underneath it's still four sided so there is no other way which means that we will create multiple surfaces here specifically six and um, but we'll get to it. First of all, let's try and define the type of connection. So I'll create one degree curve here and change the view to front. So I would like it not to be flat, but actually an arch. And as I mentioned before, I would like to be parametric, so it will be easier for you to follow. So what I will do is I will pick the tool called uh, Line Perpendicular Tool, this one. It's uh, from the uh, curve uh, uh, key point curve tools here, and they all have a slightly different color, and they all have they have a lot of different functions, but one of them they share in common, and this is additional options for the attribute. I will show you how important they are in a second. So perpendicular works with orthographic mode. Don't forget about that. So I will slide, snap, slide. Uh, and snap by holding Control Alt, snap it to this blue line, and then um, basically um, reflect. One second. All right. So here we go. And by the way, if you don't have the uh, these uh, kind of guided blue lines, uh, which defines like the divisions of the curve. It's really easy to turn them on. In the top right corner, there is a small triangle. Click on it. And there's like a curve, snap options, snap divisions too. So this is the, your, your parameter. All right, so back to the uh, perspective, uh, line, line, oh, sorry, a perpendicular line tool. So as I said, additional option called attribute. So if you uh, open it in the information window, you will see there is a length, radius, or angle sweep. And this is really helpful because I can just set the specific number in millimeters. How much? Well, let's say two. Two will do. All right. Now we managed to establish this line. Why well, we did this line? So, as I mentioned, I need to build an arch. And uh, this point here on top will be the marking for the peak of an arch. So how far it goes, right? So now we can go and create an arch. Of course, we can't do it from a single degree surface, so let's bring more. Um, so I'll open the menu called Rebuild Parent, and in reality, actually, it's the same as this one in the left corner on your uh, control panel, but it just opened with the hotkey. Um, if I remember correctly, hotkey is universal, it's Alt-D, but I may be wrong, don't remember. So let's set up degree to uh, three, this is enough. And uh, yeah, this is our vertical curve. Now we can bend it. So uh, before we bend, it will be better to a little bit spread these CVs apart because if I don't do that, I will get somewhat like in a, in a pinch in the, in the center. So let me illustrate what I mean. I will pick another tool called the stretch tool, this one. Click on the curve, click on the bottom right, sorry, bottom right plus handles click on it and snap and drag, right? Cool, so we have it. Now let's go and check its curvature. I'm using a tool called Curve Curvature, this one. I will click on the curve and kind of like obvious already that, especially from the front, that the acceleration, and just shows you the acceleration, is not, it's not linear. Um, and it, it's actually a little bit bigger here in the center. So. I prefer to have it a little bit less dramatic and more neutral. Um, so let's do that. I will basically I will delete this curve and just quickly rebuild that doing the same stuff. So click, pick three degrees. But this one, this time I will pick my CVs, by the way, using the uh, pick CV tool, uh, this one. So I will pick the CVs and I will center my pivot using the center pivot options. So center the pivot, it will center across the selection, right? Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is I will scale it relatively. So let's do that. Scale, hit tab and type 
just a minimum uh, spread will be enough. So let's type one point uh, oh one. All right. So we moved it just a bit, but when I will repeat the step with the stretching, so click on plus plus handles, click, drag, check. Yeah, you see, it's much more neutral. And this is actually what I strive for. So I'm happy with it. I will delete this cut curve. And um, okay, let's proceed. What are we gonna do next? So next, as we need, uh, we have a lot of surfaces here. We need to find the center where all of them converge. And not just only to find the center, but put it in the proper height. Let's start with finding the center. So luckily for us, we have three curvature, three arches, and they're somewhat forming a triangle. And actually, we should build a triangle to find the center. So let's do that. Let's uh, pick one degree curve, um, snap it to the centers, repeat it for the other side, and uh, let's do the uh, yeah, actually, a uh, cool note. If your CVs are turned on, you can not just only click and drag using Control Alt, but you can just snap to the CVs holding control. So control, you don't need to be just somewhere in the proximity. So click, click. Yeah, that's it. It's just a quality of life. All right, so we managed to build a circle here from the centers, uh, but where is the center? Well, uh, we need to find the center of the circle, or sorry, of, of the triangle, and it's very simple, you know, just a basic geometry, so let's do that. All right, so here is the center. Let's delete uh, unnecessary stuff, these ones, we don't need that anymore. All right, um, well, what can I say, actually? Um, this is the center, so the only thing we really need to do now uh, is to push it away, because as you may see, uh, it's too low, right? Like, check this out. This is an arch, and this is the center, right? But we need to uh, push it away uh, the way that the distance to the center of these arches will stay equal. How are we going to do that? Well, we will use this specific um, tool called a vector. Let's pick the vector. Click and drag. Like that. Snap it. And define the direction. Here. Oh, nope. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, let's try again. One, oh, and define the direction, click, and space bar. Here we go. Here we go. All right, so what are we going to do next? So basically, it shows us the normal direction, if you will, and this is good because we will be moving the center away in this direction. Now, um, there is multiple ways to move the center, uh, to move all of these curves, for example. Um, but just for the sake of the tutorial, I will introduce you to the construction planes. So if you uh, try the generalized kite software, like, I don't know, Fusion 360, for example, you are pretty familiar with construction planes and actually use them very heavily. So LS uh, has construction planes as well, and they are actually very, very useful. So let's create one. I will go to the plane here. It's, 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 it's in my marking menu. This is how it looks, and my option is geometry. So what I'm going to do is I will just click on it, on my vector, and uh, just rotate it a little bit, snapping with Ctrl Alt to the uh, our guide curve, and hit set or space bar, and here we go. So we have a new plane, and as you can see, uh, the grid is already showing you that we changed the direction and the different the, the local axis appear. So we can easily switch back and forth using toggle construction plane like that. Yeah, really uh, easy. All right. So we go back to the new construction plane. And what we're going to do next is we will create the geometry plane. So basically from the primitives, click and snap, hit S for scale, scale it down. Um, you know, I think 
I think this one will do. Um, and now uh, we can um, we can just project our curves like these ones onto this point. So let's do that. Let's hit project. This is the 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 tool which I'm using. Project. I set Z. Click on the point. Spacebar for go. Select all the curves and hit spacebar again. And basically project. You see they're green right now. They're green because they have history. But here they are. This is the plane. Let me show you. Yeah. So this is this is the plane and this is the curves on it. So. All right. What are we gonna do now? Now we uh, take this and create the new layer. We call it uh, we call it temp, and then we will assign this curves there and just hide it, because at this point this is an unnecessary clutter. All right. So when we did that, now what we can do is we can um, move these um, center away, and when I will pick this plane and uh, activate my gizmo, you will see that it will be moved in the proper direction. So let's move it. Click on the triangle, uh, hit tab. There is uh, ABS, which means absolute movement, uh, absolute from the global axis, I mean like from original ones. Uh, we don't need that. So we type R, hit enter, to relative. And now hit tab again and type 6. I think 6 will do. Right, so, well, we successfully moved the center and now we can start building our curve networks for this uh, piece. All right, so to do that, I will toggle my construction and use the tool called Draft, this one, this one, and basically define, select the curve, dis define the direction, this one. Let's check the length to, um, well, I don't know, let's say 10, like this. And then, um, well, basically hit spacebar and create the surface. All right, so this curve, I will call it, uh, I will call it the guide curve because it's what it is. Now I will click on the patch precision tool, click and drag and define the center. Once again, we already did it before. Right, so why I did that? Well, I did that to create um, um, the uh, tangent connection between the line I will build right now and the edge. So let's do that. I will use one degree curve again and just basically snap that. Okay, from the center to this uh, um, guy. Um, guide curve. Um, now I'll pick my straight line and change the degree to 3. All right, so now I can align to the new surface with the, with the isopam and actually be accurate with that. So G1, continuity, align option, right, it's this, this tool. So click and click. As you can see, the line become green because um, uh, align uh, creates a history when we operate when it operates so I can just use the query edit this one on the line and open the align options again how I left them right so we align to tangency and as a tangency alignment you know it, it uses one degree so now let's do the same on this side but this this time it's already in the center but we need to align that in the proper direction so let's do that align all right, so basically align the same way. Now we have the first part of our arch, but how good it is? Well, um, actually it's not that great. Um, and to really illustrate it, let me isolate these curves. So I'm isolating that uh, and duplicating it. Let me adjust my manipulator. Uh, come on. Okay, let's delete that. Um, let's go duplicate it. Sometimes it's doing dumb stuff. And uh, reflect it. Okay, so why I reflect this stuff? What is the purpose? So, as uh, we talked before, this one is just a one piece and it will be mirrored across. 
So basically here will be connection with the same surfaces which were, will be built with the same curves. So these curves should align together. But if you remember, I align this curve tangentially to the surface, not to the same curve. And um, uh, you probably have a question, why I am aligning it to a tangency rather than the curvature? Well, even if I am striving for the curvature, well, the answer is because symmetrical curves, symmetrical curves, um, with a uh, first row of CVs in line forms the curvature already. They are symmetrical and two degrees are already in tandem, already in one line. Uh, it's automatically uh, curvature. So tangency on symmetry will bring you curvature. But how good this curvature is? Well, that's why I actually duplicate it here. And um, let's, uh, let's check the... Uh, Curvature here and here. I'm using curve curvature again. So even though this connection is curvature, it's not a good curvature. So let's do it again. So by the way, uh, if you want to put more details into your curvature combs, it's very easy when they are selected. Left mouse button drag, make it bigger or smaller. Middle mouse button drag, create bring more samples. So we bring more samples and scale it. And you can see that the curve which we used to form the tangency in this connection, double tangency, which forms curvature, as we already discussed, um, formed the curvature, but not a good one. We have a really significant acceleration drop, um, and we need to fix it. So before we even do that, before we fix it, we delete the history, because this edge still aligned as a G1, these align as a G1. I don't want to mess with it at this point, so I'll just delete it and freely move the CVs. So I'll pick both of them and I will use CV manipulation tool with additional uh, sub, sub tools. So this one called slide. I will uh, lower the sensitivity of my mouse and then I will click and just drag it. Um, see what's going on? And I just go away. I, I found it um, extremely satisfying. Yeah. So basically, yeah. Okay, guys. So we are pretty happy with the result, I think. It's really beautiful. And uh, that's it. Now we can delete this curve, show everything back and work on this part. So by the way, let's pick our center and put it into the temp. We don't need it anymore. And focus on this part. So let's start by once again, drawing the line, aligning it to the center. Where is the center? Uh, oh, here it is. So align it to the center, that's good. And um, now let's bring more degrees as we did in, in the previous curve. So, but this time I will align not as a G1 as I did here. No, 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 I will align as a G2 as the proper curvature. And by the way, when I do it, I will tick out of scale G2 like that. So I don't want to mess with this uh, CV when I will be tweaking it. I will be move, tweaking the whole uh, curve using only one CV. All right, so why I aligned it as a G2, why I didn't align it as a G1? Well, because these curves are not symmetrical. These CVs forms tangency and these one forms curvature. Once again, they are not symmetrical. And if I will check uh, curve curvature, oh, sorry, my curvature comp, just bring more details, you will see that, yeah, it is a curvature, but a kind of a shitty one. So once again, pretty hard transition. Let's make it uh, a little bit softer. So to do so, I will click on my Curie Edit, this one, and just click on the curve. And as I said before, 
uh, a line tool creates a history uh, by default. It, you see there's an enchant box create history. Really helpful stuff. So now we click and we just drag. Come on, a little bit more. All right. Let's um, create a bigger Uh huh. Okay. Now let's go to these these one. I will just. Mm. All right. I think this will do. Great. And once again, when I move this one, this uh, CV moves accordingly. Okay. Now these are out of the way. Let's delete the history. And. Uh, Toggle the construction plane. All right, so now we have this uh, arch, really good one, uh, but we need more of them. Uh, how much? Well, this is uh, from, from the triangle, right? So let's divide 360 by three, uh, uh, basically curves or arches, and how many we get? We get 120 degrees. So let's duplicate it. Um, adjust manipulator and rotate it on 120 degrees. All right, you see where it's going, right? So duplicate it again, adjust, snap, and then align 120 degrees. All right, so you kind of see where all this is going, and there is there will be clearly six uh, surfaces which are actually equal: one, two, three, four, five, six. We don't need to do all of them, of course. We need to build only one, but this one should be perfectly aligned on itself to form a beautiful uh, transition. So to do that, first, we will start with building additional guided surfaces. Why I need them, I will tell you in a minute. So first of all, let's build them. So I will create the draft tool, I already used it before, select and uh, build using spacebar. Now this one, um, this one is a little bit tricky. It doesn't have a one direction. It's actually one arc and another arc. And in this situation, we will use a rail tool, this one. Generation and rails will be one by one. Sweeping mode will be, uh, well, I will change it in the, on the fly. So we'll just, uh, the only thing we need to do at this point is change, check curve segments. We will need that. So click on the draft. Click on the curve. Here is your surface. So as you can see, there is a small kind of like um, crosses or something. I don't know, like the markings. It's not the cross. Uh, so it's because curve segments checked. If you uncheck it, they will disappear. When you check it, they will appear. So basically, they help you uh, define the length if you don't want it to be like, you know, full length. Really helpful. So first, let's check the generation one to tangency. We already discussed all this tangent principle. Um, so uh, the second thing, we go to the continuity options and the collinear. Well, and just make it collinear to this structure of the guided surface. It's, I think it's collinear already, but just to be sure. Then we will change this sweep mode from parallel to uh, natural. I like that. Well, actually, you know what? It doesn't really... Mm. No, I probably stay with natural. I think it will give us a better surface overall. Now we click on this and using Alt, just snap to the center and release. Here you go. Okay, so we built two additional surfaces. We didn't build another one here because we don't need that here. Um, so why we build that in the first place? So we build that the same for the same reason as this one to align surface with tangency or curvature. Well, in our situation, it will be tangency. We technically have a possibility to align to the curve to tangency or curvature, but in reality, we are aligning not to the curve but to imaginary plane. Which have and align it to tangents and to curvature. And we have this 
opportunity. Um, so there is two two tools which we can use to create a patch. One of them called uh, Square, and another one called Rail. I will show both of them. Uh, I prefer using Rail in this situation. I will tell you why, but. Let's start with the square and about all of these kind of imaginary surfaces I'm talking about. So I'm picking the square tool, here it is. And what I'm gonna do is I will pick the curve here. Curve, curve, I'm avoiding my drafts and uh, my guided surfaces and just pick the curves. So this is the network it built for me. And here, once again, I don't want it to be free. I wanted it to be tangent to the same surface as this one, right? So what I'm going to do is I'll go to the, uh, well, well, this is the first uh, edge, and I will pick implied tangency. So implied tangency, do what it, it tells it will do. It will imply tangent. So basically creating an imaginary surface. And this is what it does, right? This is what it does. Um, if we create just the tangency, we will get nothing. It will be the same as free boundary because it's just the curve. So why not to use imply tangency and imply curvature all the time? Well, the problem is, is that this imply tangency good on paper, but on practice, it rarely do the job it's supposed to do. And in most cases, it aligns the CVs the, the wrong way, which makes it even harder because then you need to tweak its error. So instead, it's easier to actually build the surfaces yourself and then align uh, using the standard G1 or G2 tangency. So now, uh, this out of the way, let's talk... Uh, yeah, by the way, this is the reason why this one doesn't have a guided, uh, guided uh, surface. I didn't build it. I didn't build it because we will be aligning as a position, not as a tangency and not as a curvature. Okay, this out of the way, let's talk about which tool is better. So both of them are good. Uh, as, as I said, the uh, rail tool is better because rail tool gives you an option to create a flow. The square tool doesn't create the flow. And to illustrate it, let me just create this. But this time I will go from my guided surfaces, not from the curves. So one, two, guided surface, guided surface. So what I'm going to do is I will align it. So two will be position, three will be tangent, one will be tangent, four will be tangent. So there is too many uh, CVs. So let's remove it. We built this uh, so guided surfaces with from the three degree curves. So let's set that they are three degrees. Oh, sorry, not this one, this one. All right, three degrees. And now, uh, so this one, y degrees actually, if I say three, yeah, position failure. Okay, four. All right, so as you can see, there is a small uh, deviations, but they are not really significant, extremely tiny. So on three, I'll probably check uh, collinear. All right. Okay, so, and you may say, well, that's great, let's let's leave it like this, or, you know, the deviation is minuscule. Well, first, we still need to fix this, but the real issue with all of the surface is this point. As you can see, it's somewhere, I don't know, nowhere. Uh, why that happened? Well, these row of CVs, all these ones, they are used to align. These ones, the first row, all the first row as well. So first row aligns as a position, second row aligns as a tangency, third row, you know, on this side, there is no tangency. And this one's floating in the air. And what does it mean to us? It means that the surface, which we will build this patch, will have a bulge. We don't need the bulge. We need a perfect surface. So we can go and just try to mess up with the boundary bias here trying to find somewhat the proper angle, but it's difficult, to, you know, it's basically you guessing. Or, well, eventually you just delete the history, pick it, pick the CV, and manually move it across by trying to place it 
where it's supposed to be, uh, checking your surface always with the zebra stripes and other diagnostic shading. So that will be like a heavy lifting. Um, but we don't want that. Uh, why do we need to do it is if we can do it much faster, easier, and with the flow already. So once again, I'm not saying that the square tool is a bad tool. In, in, in a lot, there is a lot of situations where you don't need to flow. You need to be it natural. And that's where the square tool is perfect. But for this specific situation, rail will be better. So let's let me show you why and let's actually create the surface. So generations and rails. Uh, I need two generation curves, which will be here and here. And the rails will be the long one and they will basically define the flow. So two generation, two rails, continuity, let's say for position for now. The collinear, let's turn it on for now and let just create it. So once again, from guided surfaces, one, two, three, and four. And oh, what's happened? Our surface didn't build. I don't have CVs. It doesn't work. Well, if something happens like this and you create the tool and it just doesn't work, it doesn't do the surface, it always try to tell you why. So here, if you click on this icon, there is a prompt line history. And here you can see that it actually have a message to us. It's saying that, well, you can't build it. And it suggests us to rebuild uh, using rebuild rail on. So what it means, what it, what it uh, basically tries to say is that one of these checkboxes should be on for the rails. We can do that and this surface will appear, but it will appear with a, a lot of spans. Um, let's try again. So one, two, three, four. Rebuild rail one. Bam. So we have the surface. Now we have a lot of spans here. It looks like shit and we will not use it. So another way to solve the problem and actually ask it to build a proper surface is to define uh, the amount of CVs and uh, uh, basically amount of the degrees yourself for generation curve and for rail. That's where explicit control comes to the, uh, to the play. We just use it in the beginning, not after. Um, and if you ask me, okay, so, so why the surface wasn't built? Well, you know, there is a multiple reasons. One of the most prominent ones, uh, which may lead to this problem, is that this arch is under depressional flex. So in reality, it's much more complex and without the rational flex, you need much more uh, degrees to really achieve the same goal. And rail tool doesn't work under the rational flex. So that may be a problem. Another problem will be this um, will be some 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 kind of error on this connection because once again it's just longer than it's supposed to be, you know. And another reason there will be of uh, uh, the the placement of the planets, you know, they may be in some kind of disorder, and that may be the reason. So there always can be a reason, you know. There Alice can do stuff or, or cannot do stuff depends on multiple reasons. Our job is to quickly address the issue and force it to do it. And that's how we do it. But basically, in this situation, we will uh, define the amount of uh, uh, CVs ourselves. So generation, we already established it will be free and the rails will be four. So let's do that. Right. Let's click, click, click and click and here we go. Now we have the surface. So what's good about the surface in the first place? Look at this CV. It's already in place. Yeah, you don't need to do anything. It's already in place. And this is amazing. So let's go back once again. The rail is a square, is the align in many other uh, features or many other tools. They have history after they use them. And you can, with the cure edit, just go back and proceed where you left it. Um, although this uh, surface is marked as green, so you can see there is uh, where green, there is a history in it. So, okay, let's go back. Um, what we're gonna do now is we will align. So generation one, tangency. Generation two, tangency. And rail two, tangency. All right. So 
And now we go to continuity check and you will see that we have a, a, a minor errors here. This is not a big deal, we'll figure it out. Um, so there is two ways. Well, first of all, let's, let's, uh, collinear, let's use our G2 as a collinear option. All right. 0 0.09, I'll without that. I still prefer having collinearity here. All right, so so what you're gonna do is we can delete the history right now and manually move CVs and that called CV massaging. But before that, it's a good rule of thumb to check the blend values. So here we have um, uh, the slider called the gen blend value. Basically, this is the um, bias between the generation curves and the rail curves. Let's let's move this around first. So let's see where we came up with. So it makes it even worse. So let's go in the other direction. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? It actually really close. Let's try a little bit lower. 0 0.35. 0 0.38. Zero point three seven. All right, here we go. So it doesn't mean that the surface is perfect because at the end of the day, we aligned it not on itself, but on the guide surfaces. It helps immensely and save us um, from a lot of pain, but this is not the final one. So at this point, I will just click it, click on it and delete the uh, history. Now, I'll hide this one, create all, select all of the objects and put it into the temp and then unhide this surface. Let's put it into this uh, layer. Okay. Now let's try to align it on itself. All right. So first of all, um, I will duplicate it and just toggle the construction line. So I will duplicate it. Adjust, snap, and reflect. Now this one, again, duplicate it. Adjust, snap, reflect. And, uh, okay, reflection is not enough. We need to rotate it as well. So we'll rotate. Okay. And uh, now let's go toggle the construction plane and on this side. So basically we wanna cover all the edges which we need to fix the minor issues and adjust it finally. So I'll pick this one and um, I will try to um, reflect it. It's actually a really good, uh, moment to mention the reflection. So you see, if I will go and just reflect it like this, or not sorry, in the wrong direction, um, like this, and um, oh, I will check the tangency, like, oh, we have a small deviation. We need to fix that, right? And you're like, okay, I will pick the CVs on the both sides and equally push it up or push it down until it matches, right? And you're like, yeah, sure, no problem. You will pick the uh, CV manipulation tool and bam, What's going on? Why handles and the, showing into the different directions? What's going on? Well, that's because you reflect it using this tool. <laughs> it reflects the handles as well. So you can you you can fix that. Don't make me wrong. So at this point, when you have this problem, you can go to the tool called Reverse Surface UV and reverse them until it just kind of like matches. But there is always an easier way, and this easier way is my trusty gizmo. So duplicate it, adjust, snap, and reflect manually relative to minus one. And now when you try, you will see, yeah, perfect. It's in the proper positions. So yeah, just a small hint. All right, um, now let's try to finalize it. Um, to do so, I will check uh, the surface, I will see where it's failing. Oh, technically it's failing everywhere, but not for a significant margin. And right now what we need to do is we need to uh, adjust that. So first of all, I will take this one and move it along the normals. Right. Now let's take these ones and move these, uh, just like that. Mm 
All right. Well, to some extent, we will manage to do it, but there is a still some deviation. So let's proceed. Let's pick this one. 0 0.2. It's, it's on this side, but I really don't want to mess with this semi that much. Although we still can. So let's pick these ones. Um, let's move it against the normals a little bit. Okay. Like this. So we basically pushed it up a little. Let's take these ones and uh, let's slide these one a little bit more. Okay, we achieved the curvature on this stuff. Now this one. Okay, we'll pick these ones and um, let's slide them. Let's slide them from this one. Maybe this one. No, this one. All right, and now let's try to Uh, it's almost there. Come on, just a little bit. All right, we have, you see, 0 0.02 is our tolerance. That's how much we need to, to, to move. Let's, uh... okay. All right, so we managed to um, align it on itself. Now what we're gonna do is we will delete all these unnecessary parts and basically reflect that again, because this one is the cleanest one. Let's do that, toggle the construction plane and repeat a couple of steps. Uh, so I will reflect again. I will do it this time a little bit quicker because we already did it a couple of times, right? Now I will pick all of them, toggle the construction plane and rotate them both once again we need three parts so we will rotate it on 100 degrees let's go snap and type duplicate it again oh sorry um all right so now when we um check it right now we have all of them in line all of them and uh, if you're interested how good the quality of the surface, well, let's check the zebra stripes. Yeah, a look at that. Well, guys, this is uh, really good. It's just a really high quality, mostly because we did everything correctly. And on top of it, we have a really tight order. So you couldn't really uh, spot any discrepancies using this tolerances just by a naked eye. That's already really good. Okay, but this is not over yet. Uh, let me uh, let me just actually delete that. Um, so we toggled our uh, construction panel back where it was, and now what we need to do is we need to reflect it a couple of times around to form ourselves uh, the the actual uh, finished surface. So let's do that. So Z Y Z X Z. Let's pick all of these ones. Click X, Y. Let's turn our diagnostic shading. And all right, here it is. A look at that. Look at that beauty, huh? Good. All right, so now uh, let's quickly check that everything is curvature. And it, it is, of course it is. All right, uh, let's check these ones as well, if you want, and these ones as well. So they all are. Now what we're gonna do is, uh, let's see where the temp file is. Okay, it's here on this side. Okay, so this is not over yet for this lesson because we didn't really finish the outer shell completely. And let's just call it outer shell. Outer shell, okay, like that. So there is a couple things we need to do. First, we need to make this uh, hole uh, a lesser diameter. So basically, we will create a flat uh, surface, uh, like a step uh, inside. And then we need to create uh, some kind of a, like uh, uh, a wall and the fillets. 
So let's do this right now and by doing it, uh, finish the uh, first lesson. Right, so to do that though, we need to go back to our first layer, this one, and grab, stole this specific circle. So let's do that. Control C, Control V, and assign it, hide this, show this, and if we are, well, we basically see the uh, main shape, but right now we have this uh, circle with us, which we will use to step from. So I duplicate it again, and now I will scale it. Once again, they all were created in relative scale, so when we duplicate it, it's not exception. So let's scale it to 70 by 70, and we created a step. Right. So now we need to create a surface which will cover this hole which we marked, right, with a flat surface. Um, there is a couple of ways to do so. We can skin uh, right from these segments, uh, which we can do, but the easier way will be is to skin from the actual circle. So as we work with really tight tolerances and rational flags, the edge of the surface and these circle are in line in the in the perfect uh, positional uh, continuity. So um, let's isolate it and just skin with these circles. I will use the tool called skin. Here it is. And just drag, drag and drag. Now let's take this circle. We don't need that anymore. We will delete it. Let's take this circle, hide it for now pick all four parts and group that as a single object. Well, they, of course, by the surface they're separate, but they will treat it by the single object when I pick them as an object. I will uh, show everything, and now what I can do is I can check the position. Let's check. Here we go. It's positional. A perfect, perfect position. Okay. What you're going to do now is a pretty interesting one. So I need to create a wall inside, but how can I do that? So the first thing we should think, okay, well, I will just take this uh, surface and I will just draft from that and just that's how I create the wall. And although this is the pretty legit way of doing stuff, I would like to show you the way um, and, and a little bit of interesting nuances using uh, drafts from the... Um, rational flagged uh, circles. So this is our circle and like, okay, now I need to build the draft from it. So basically the, the surface, extrude the surface. So I'll pick my draft, clay, create everything, pick the direction. We did it before multiple times. Let's say the length will be uh, 13 and execute. And you'll say, well, that's good. And you moved on. But in reality, it's not good. If you check the surface, you will see, oh, what's going on? Why there is five degrees instead of three? Oh, what's about the radius, you think? And you're like, okay, we'll check this out. And you check the radius and, oh, shit, what's going on? And uh, you're like, okay, maybe I will check the deviation curve to curve. And, oh, my God, there is a deviation. So it's not in line. Oh, shit. You will, you will think if you know where to look, because in most cases, if you don't know about this, you will just miss it. And then somewhere later, hours or maybe days later, it will bite you in the ass and you will have no clue why it even happened. Well, it happened it because of the rational curves and to fix that, the fix is extremely simple. You just delete that and draft it one arc at a time. One, second one, third one and fourth one. That's it. That's the, all you need to do. And as you can see, three by three, let's check uh, the deviation here, curve to curve, just, just in case, yeah. zero, perfect. So now they are perfect. So you need to keep, uh, keep it in mind, okay? So without further ado, let's open it back and let's actually, let's actually kind of move it into the proper layer again. And these one too. What the hell? All right. So the last thing which we need to do is we need to pick these um, 
segments, you delete the history, group it, and make affiliates. So to make affiliate, you will use the proper tool called the fillet. This one, the construction type will be cord, G2, cord length, let's say 1.7. I will remove explicit control and I will use the flow as edge align everywhere because there's a lot of parts. So if you don't know what the cordal uh, length is, put it down into the into the uh, comments. Maybe I will do a separate video about it. Um, for now, just just put it cord, and the cordal type will be cordal length. Um, and the length itself, so the length of the um, fillet will be um, 1.7. So let's go and build it. So I'm basically clicking by selecting the surfaces, and I will click Build. Now, it looks like we don't have enough um, data, basically enough details to really create it the proper way. You see there is like a small gap, 0 0.003 millimeters. So on top of it, if I will check here, on this surface connection here, it actually shows an error. It was absolutely clean and now it is an error. You know, like, let's check on this side. Oh good, well, what's going on? What's happened? Well, there is a couple interesting things to note here. First of all, when we created this uh, surface, this one, let me just uh, quickly build that again here, here, here. Come on. So when we build that, we actually created the transition and then this tool cut these surfaces. So it's kind of trimmed it. You see, this is the where the actual edge is and this is how we trimmed it. And as it's trimmed it, it actually changed the properties of the surface really slightly. Um, you know, Alice is not a perfect tool. Every card works within the specific tolerance. And of course, you know that. So, um, and this... Uh, Kind of deviations is something you actually don't have control of. Um, it's just what it is. So the only thing you can do is you can check this by the arc length. Check the arc length. But as you can see, it shows some of the same kind of like a, a deviation, if you will. So what we're going to do next is we go per spun again. And we need to tweak it. So first of all, we go to this one and try to set everything to default. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. In this situation, it makes it even worse. So click back, let's check. Um, so let's check this uh, back to edge align, and then we will go and create an explicit control. That's where we will actually um, define the structure for ourselves. So let's build it. Come on. All right, so at this point, as you may see, we have some deviations, specifically here. Right. So let's go and uh, try to fix it by pushing more surfaces. Once again, I'm, I'm saying not spans, I'm saying surfaces because this is not spans. It will be spans if we will uncheck these Bezier surfaces, but for me it's checked and it should be checked for you as well. All right, so we created this um, construction. Every single one of them is a separate surface right now. We have a curvature across and we have the small problem here. Not only here, but actually on all the sides. And uh, let's be honest, this is not very good. I'm not really happy about that, but, you know, what can you do? The only true way how we can solve it is just by to adjusting it. So first of all, we'll pick this one, delete the construction history. So we have the trimming, you remember? And uh, now what we need to do is we need to retrim it. So if I go back and basically retrim that and check it again, as you can see, this is the same high quality surface. There is no 
problems with it whatsoever. But when we trim it, when we pick this one, you know, this, this curve, and when we trim it, we will have the problem, you see? So, by the way, one of the technical solution may be is on the fillet, short edge tolerance, uh, just, 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 and the overall tolerances construction panel set uh, this one tighter and the construction options looser. But you never know for sure. So in this situation, the only thing we can do in this uh, situation is basically pick these ones and slightly move it up. Right. And that's how you fix it. But at this point, of course, you have uh, you may have some problems in these uh, these areas. But in this case, actually, no, you don't have. Everything is okay. All right. Now let's go to this part because it probably have the same issue, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. So let's pick this. I'll push it up a little bit. Once again, the changes are so tiny that you absolutely can't see it by a naked eye. But once again, we go for the high tolerance, isn't it? So we are paying the price. So here, the same. Let's pick both of them. All right. And the last one. All right. Okay, so we managed to build the fillet. <laughs> As you can see, it, it was much more complex than you thought it would be. And by the way, these problems are not always occurred. So I'm pretty happy it occurred on, uh, on in this tutorial because in most cases it doesn't and things go smooth. And then you try to replicate and you have this problem and, and you don't, don't know you just do not know what you did wrong. Well, in reality, you did all right. It's not your fault. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let me um, uh, do another fillet. This time we will do the inner part, and that one will be much simpler to do, but we will probably have a deviation one error, and that will be the great time to talk about it. So uh, let's say one millimeter. All right, so of course we have the deviation of one error. How else could it be? So what is deviation one error? So Basically, this is not an error, especially when we're talking about the flat surfaces. So this surface doesn't have a crown, and it doesn't technically it it is not a curvature in mathematical algorithm, but in reality it is. So basically, if this is flat and you have a deviation one error, forgot about it. Don't don't bother. Like you can eliminate it by throwing more. Uh, data, more surfaces and more degrees into the surface, and it will go away eventually. But it shouldn't, because it didn't really change the quality of the surface. And of course, it will be a completely different story if you have a deviation one error on a really complex curved surface, uh, when you have like this like arch here or a bulge, and you will have this, well, yeah, that's where you need to be before you will let it go, you need to check your zebra stripes, you need to check the other diagnostic shading to be sure that it's just a fluke and everything is good. So you have a deviation error, check the surfaces yourself. See, is it good or not? Because in this situation, you just don't need to bother. Just let it go, it's all right. Okay, now, now what I'm gonna do, I will, uh, actually, do I like it? Well, actually, yes, I do. I think I do. So let's pick all of this. Delete the construction history. We already deleted that, right? Let's remove the grid. Uh, no, we didn't. So delete the construction history. Pick these objects. We're going to pick objects. Ah, it's a separate. Okay, I'm sorry. So let's pick all the necessary parts. 
check that it's there. Yeah, done. It's done. All right. So we almost done, but now there is a one peel we need to 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 uh, kind of like uh, we need to pick uh, our poison at this point because what we need to do at this point is we need to take uh, this object and reflect it on this side then rotate and reflect and rotate again and you will say yeah we did it already multiple times what's the problem well the problem is <laughs> that you need to project that again what i mean by that is that if i'll take this one right and mirror it across yeah here it is but the surface is not trimmed we the fill is here but it's not trimmed. So what you need to do is you need to project normals, click and do this stuff up for all of them and then trim that, check. You will have the problem, of course, and then you go here, pick this stuff, move it up until it finally, finally, and you need to do it for all sides. So one, two, three, four, five, Okay, what is the alternative? Well, the alter alternative is to delete everything and left with all of this stuff, which you already aligned, right? And use this one as our um, new um, base piece because it's symmetrical as well. So we can go and toss it back and forth and just basically recreate the system. It it looks like a more convenient way of doing stuff, but uh, once again, Alice works to the specific set of tolerances and no one guarantees you that when you do that, it will actually stitch back and align to the way it is right now. No one will guarantee you. So when you have something like that, basically you need uh, to have a leap of faith and uh, uh, or just go through the old route and just repeat a lot of a manual work and just, yeah, it's painful. But, you know, this is the part of the journey. So what I'll do in these specific situations is I will just basically take the elements I really like. So what, what, so first of all, I would like to go on the easier route. So what I'm going to do is I will just pick all of this, you know, all of this stuff, pick this object, but I'll just duplicate that go to the new layer, assign it here, and group it. All right, so if something goes wrong, I can always go back to the lesser evil and manually project and realign things. For now, I will try to save time, your time, your time and my time, and to finish the work faster by just uh, um, hoping that when I will reflect this specific part, it will stitch. So let's see. And I'm, and, and I'm saying stitch, actually, it's not stitching, aligning. Stitching is a different process, which we actually will be tackling in the third lesson. So, okay, so we have this. Let's go and just try and see how deep is the rabbit hole, right? So duplicate it. Uh, and um, Let's uh, rotate it. Yeah, what I'm thinking about. Let's rotate that and uh, duplicate that and rotate that again. So the moment of truth. Will it... Uh, what? Uh, just a transform. Adjust it by transform. Come on. Uh, and that's why you group them. Because right now I missed click and uh, I copy that on themselves. But as they are uh, a grouped object, it's so much easier just to pick the different group, all right, that without selecting every single piece of it, right? Um, so let's do it again, uh, 90 degrees, all right. So we're somewhat reconstructing it, but are we? That the moment of truth, let's check. Let's check the curvature. Okay, this is promising. All right, this is promising. All right, we managed to do it. Uh, it's the wrong one, don't worry. Oh yeah, so luckily for us, it's stitched perfectly. Once again, with the really tight tolerances, you never know. It may fail, 
like, like, like in this situation where we adjust the CVs here, right? It may not. So if in your example, uh, in your variant, you wasn't able to stitch it, even that you did pretty much the same as I do when everything was curvature, and when you do what I do right now, when it doesn't work, don't worry. I hope that you did the same. You copied it as a separate layer, and you just hide that, open up your original one with this one, and then you will project only this as I did here. So you project it on this one, right? And then you click project, select the surface, and manually project all of it here, manually project all of that, then trim, pick the surfaces, check where is the problem is. It's better to, by the way, you do it um, for all of them at the same time, so they all be equal. But just for the demonstration purposes, you know, you move this stuff, you already did it, and bam, right. Quickly check it, and then go to the next one. And you need to do it one, two, so you need to do it five times. And painful, yeah. So I hope that for you, as well as for me, these variant, the second variant, uh, worked. And it actually stitched, no, stitched, sorry, once again, aligned properly. All right, guys, so I think that's enough for uh, one lesson. We actually did a pretty big chunk of the model. Actually, we did the biggest chunk of the model. The last are left. Um, and we will do it on the next uh, modeling uh, video. Basically, proceed where we left it. And we left it like uh, this. I really hope that you, uh, for everyone who actually followed, um, Till this point, so follow along for the whole video, which was a long one. So thank you very much for staying for so long. And I hope that all of you actually have a, a similar result and you achieved the goals. And it, what's more importantly, even if you have some minor deviations, so like 0 0.01 millimeter, what's more importantly, as you understand the principle, how you can connect multiple similar surfaces together, what is the process and yeah, I hope you, you found something useful in, in this video. That's the only reason why I, I, I used it. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I crafted it. So, okay, um, without further ado, I will invite you to the next lesson, which I don't know, maybe I'll write on YouTube, maybe it will be a little bit later. And uh, yeah, until then, have a great day and goodbye.